Following the long and surreal journey into Kyiv, President Biden was not on a plane operated by the U.S. military, but instead on a train run by Ukrainian railways. President Biden boarded the train at the Poland-Ukraine border. That's the same station where many of thousands of refugees also traveled through after Russia invaded Ukraine a year ago, fleeing with their families and for their safety from Putin's war. The head of Ukraine's railway system has dubbed the trip Rail Force One now, saying that it was an honor to host Biden, while acknowledging that it was quite a complicated journey to actually get the president uh, on that plane, that complicated project, as he described it. Alexander Kamushin then apologized for breaking the railway's on-time performance, saying still 90 percent of the trains on that secret trip as it was going on did operate on time. He said it was painful for me and my team, but I had to do that. Only 90 percent of our trains arrived on time yesterday. I apologize. I spoke with Alexander Kamushin just before the program this morning. Joining me now is the CEO of Ukrainian Railways, Alexander Kamushin. Alexander, thank you so much for being with us. I know you've had uh, uh, quite a week. When did you find out that, that President Biden was coming, that he was going to be riding on one of your trains? Well, we were happy to bring him in and out uh, with this visit. I'm sure that that was a historical moment for Ukraine, for U.S., for the whole world. Because uh, if you remember, Russians uh, promised to take Kyiv in three days. And finally, on the 62nd day of the war, President Biden appears in Kyiv and walks across the street with my president, Zelensky. So it's kind of really historical moment. We were happy and privileged and honored to be the official carrier of the President Biden. So we called our train Rail Force One. <laughs> Rail Force One, that is what you've dubbed it now that President Biden has been on board. Yep. You talked to my colleague Anderson Cooper about a year ago, and you told him then you were ready to host President Biden if he was going to come to Ukraine. You were ready for him uh, to travel in one of your cars. But when you found out that he was actually coming, were you, were you kind of nervous? I was not nervous, but focused and uh, determined until the moment he left the borders of Ukraine, because trust me, it was a complicated mission and uh, we got pretty much job to do to make it happen in a proper way. And we've done it. Yeah, what kind of preparation goes into that? How do, how do you prepare to, to host the U.S. president in such a dangerous time and dangerous place? We were hand in hand with the embassy of U.S. in Ukraine. We worked hand in hand with other special uh, services uh, from U.S. side, from Ukrainian side, the Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine. And finally, we got this job done. And you've also hosted other world leaders. Every world leader that's come into Ukraine has traveled on one of your trains getting into Kyiv. What is the responsibility like to, to have people like that on your trains? Well, we already got about 300 official delegations with worldwide leaders, presidents, prime ministers, members of parliament, of the Congress. And uh, it's really a responsible mission for us. We call this mission Iron Diplomacy. And uh, that's how we help our president to make his diplomatic mission happen. And uh, every single guest of Iron Diplomacy program is an honored uh, guest for us. We do our best to bring them in and out sa uh, safely. That's first of all. Second, we try to show them what is Ukraine, because they usually spend on the train much more time than in the city. And that was the case with President Biden as well. He spent 20 hours on the train and only four hours in the city. So we try to... We we do our best to make their trip unforgettable. Yeah, it is quite a trip. It's 20 hours with both ways included. Russia, the Russians have, have struck the trains before the train tracks. Are you ever worried about retaliation when something like this happens? Well, we are on the force day for Russian they tell us daily. So we kind of know what to do now, and we are ready for that. And actually, we 
always fix, always get back to operations. We never stop, never cancel any single train. I think one of the most remarkable things that you said yesterday when you were talking about the complicated process of getting President Biden into Kyiv on one of your trains was you apologize to other people who take Ukrainian railways, saying that only 90 percent of the trains were on time yesterday. I think everyone could, could give you a pass for this one, given you were accommodating the U.S. president on such a secret visit. Well, you know, for us, on-time performance is a really important focus. During the war, people should rely on something. Railways became a reliable transportation for our people. And that's why we had to delay some trains to make the Rail Force One run smoothly and safely. And I had to apologize because we usually strive to get better performance. But two days ago, it was not that good. I know the war has had such an impact on you personally. You have been trying to keep the trains running, as you were noting, as the source of stability for so many of your fellow Ukrainians. You yourself didn't see your family really at the beginning of the war, if I remember correctly. How have you been doing? Well, like many Ukrainians, I've got what you say, personal impact. And uh, like many Ukrainians, uh, that's really uh, significant and uh, high price we are paying in this war, uh, missing our our families and uh, having uh, fighting in this war. Uh, finally, I'm sure that one day we'll make this victory day closer, and uh, then it would be great time to spend more time with the family and uh, have some time.